What's up, everybody? I was uh, sort of looking online, and I found a bunch of videos about the graphing inequalities, but it wasn't like anything that I was totally in love with. Some of them were great. I mean, don't get me wrong, but just, you know, it wasn't really my scene. So I thought I'd make this one. Really, I just wanted to make one that didn't have, uh, that had nonlinear components to it, because I think that's what was missing from what I could find easily anyway. I'm sure there's some great ones out there, so, you know, don't think I'm bashing anybody. I'm certainly not. So for this one, it says y is greater than or e, uh, greater than 2x minus 2. And this is linear, of course. Uh, the other part of it is linear as well. The big deal about systems of inequalities is you have to graph them. And the parts that the shading overlaps on would be the solution set. So that's where all the answers are. So when you have y is greater than 2x minus 2, I'm going to go down to minus 2 and make a dot. And then the uh, 2, of course, is 2 over 1. So I'll go up 2 and over 1. And then I'll go up 2 and over 1 again. And then I can sort of draw my dotted line because remember there's no line underneath so it's dotted so I'm sort of doing this move and I'll talk about the shading on this one in just a minute by the way if you're doing this in a calculator T84 plus or whatever it happens to be um, the graph that you put in for a y sub 1 is the first one that will come out when you actually graph it so you might need to pay attention especially on one like this where the uh, it will shade for you, but it won't really show you both unless you have a, an app on there that'll do it. Um, so you have to remember that this one is supposed to be dotted, and the second one that comes out would, of course, be a solid line. And speaking of that, at plus three, I'd make a dot, and then I'll go um, down two and write one. So down two, write one, down two, write one, and then I can make my um, solid line here because the it's less than equal to, which means that I'm including the points on this line in the date in the answer solution set, I should say. Now what I'm looking for is the graph part or the shading part, which represents where all the answers happen to be. This is greater than two over one x minus two, so I need to shade up. It's sort of like if you could pour water on it, then it's the top. So I'm just gonna shade up right through here. On the other side of it, uh, the less than one, I'm going to shade down. And you always read it from the, the y side. This is y is less than, so that's how I, I know to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Now, the answer choice is the part where they're both shaded together. And as you can see, that would be right in here. So my solution set is this part. Uh, so from there, we transition into the idea of, well, what the heck happens if it's not a linear? So here's an example of one that is not linear. Uh, one of them is linear, so I'll go ahead and draw that one. The 1 fourth x plus 5, I'd go up to 5, and I'm going to make my dot, and then I'm going to go down 1 and left 4. So somewhere right in here. And then I'm going to go up 1 and right 4. So somewhere like right in here. It should be a pretty um, shallow uh, graph in terms of it doesn't go up very quickly. And this is a dotted line, just because of the fact that there's no a line underneath this part right here. So I'm going to make a little dotted line there. And I'll deal with the shading here in just a minute. Now the x squared plus 3, uh, this is going to be uh, quadratic. If you don't know what it looks like and you don't have a calculator handy, you can always you know, get the answers by just making some points and solving them. So if I plugged in 0, um, negative 1, 1, and 2, and negative 2, I could easily make a set that I could find the answers for. So if I plugged in 0 here, I'd get 0 squared, which is 0, plus 3 more would give me 3. Um, if I did minus 1 or negative 1, negative 1 squared, as long as it's in parentheses, is uh, 1, so you get 4. And negative 2 would give you 4 plus 3, so you'd end up at 7. On the other side, I'm going to deal with uh, the same things, so it would be 4 and 7. Now the thing about a quadratic like this is it's not the V shape of the absolute value. You need to make sure that you address the idea that it's sort of a curvature because it doesn't go up straight. Um, so at 1 and 4, it just kind of goes up a little bit on both sides from the original point. But then it goes up a lot, so you'll go up to the seventh spot for the next one. So over here and over here. And if you wanted to continue it on, you'd end up with something like 10 for the next one. So you want to have that nice, pretty... Uh, parabola shape. Now for the shade, my uh, y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 3 means I need to shade like right in this area. And for my 
uh, line, it would be less than. So it's going to be down here in this general area. So my overlap area is actually sort of right at the bottom, right through here. So that's the shade that you're sort of looking for in this setup. And one more, and I think we're done. This is an absolute value and a uh, negative 3x plus 1, so one of them is linear. You can do two of them that are nonlinear. I just didn't in this case. It was easier to draw it this way, I guess. So uh, the negative 3x plus 1, I'm going to go up to 1. I'm going to make my first dot. Then I'm going to go down 3 and right 1. And then I'm, on the other side of it, I'm going to go up 3 and left 1. From here, I need to decide whether it's dotted or solid. And it's solid line because there's a line underneath. So the answers are included in the set because it's less than equal to. So I need to line up my ruler correctly here, make a decent line. Now, on the other side of it, um, you can plug in values for your absolute value if you'd like to. Uh, you could also remember that an absolute value, if the number on the outside moves it, shifts it vertically, and the number on the inside shifts it horizontally, the opposite direction of what you'd think you would do. Uh, so I would probably start out at negative 2, and then I'd go to the right one. So right on this spot, actually, uh, at uh, negative 2 and positive 1. In order to show that's the truth, if my plug in x and y is here, I plug in 0. Well, the absolute value of 0 minus 1, so the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So we're sort of in you know that general area of where it's supposed to go. Uh, on the other side of it, so when I plugged in a, a value of 0, my output value, sorry, I'm insane. No, that's right. So it moved in the direction that I wanted it to move. And um, as I move over, I could do, say, an x value of 1, let's say. So at 1, I would put 1 here, and 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that's the point that I would want it to be, and at uh, 0 would be at negative 1. And then I would just continue to go up sort of in this up 1 over 1 mentality. And on the other side, it would go up 1 over 1 as well. So I end up with sort of um, a nice V shape. I'm going to cut myself short because I forgot to... And it's turned out okay for most of my lousy absolute values. So from here, I'm looking at the y is less than negative 3x plus 1. Like I said, if it's greater than, the water should be able to go on top, so that would be here. So we're going to shade under. And uh, for the greater than, uh, x, uh, the absolute value of x minus 1 uh, minus 2, absolute value of the quantity x minus 1, and that's minus 2. Anyway, I shade up because it says 2. And uh, the overlap zone is right in here, so it'll make like sort of a a little triangle if I ended it off, but this triangle goes on forever, so I guess it's not. It's just a cone-ish uh, scenario. So that's it. Just I didn't have one made, so there's something with uh, graphing linear or inequalities, some of them being non-linear.